Hello and welcome to another episode of Comics, Comics, Etc. Hello. <laughs> this week, <laughs> we, uh, something big happened. Um, Wolverine died. We'll talk about that later. Um, a lot of the stuff, well, some of the stuff we're going to talk about involves that. There's not a lot to say before we get to the reviews. Uh, yeah, not much new stuff. Uh, oh, well, I guess, if you've been keeping up with all the craziness at New York Comic Con... Marvel has lost their mind. I did a piece about this earlier in the week. Since the creation of my video, Marvel has announced two more events. So now they have Civil War happening again. Yeah. Secret Wars happening again. Okay, I'm okay with that one. Years of Future Past. Again. And apparently, Please a me. new Planet Hulk. The solicit of which <laughs> showed a planet full of Hulks. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm <laughs> now, down for that. I realized that this new wa wagon there was apparently the like events revisited and done completely differently. But Planet Hulk. But yeah, that's apparently the exciting things happening in the world of comics that we should touch on. Otherwise, let's get to the reviews. Beep, 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 beep. I should do some fanfare for that one. That's my club face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm starting a new uh, shtick. Every week, I'm going to be picking up one random comic, a series I do not read, a series that I either have a little interest in or no interest in, and if it really piques my interest, I'll just... Yeah, okay. This week, we have Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue 35. Now, Red Hood, Jason Todd's an interesting character. He's different from all the other uh, Robins and... Like, Nightwing, and Red Robin, and Night, Batwing, and that girl, that woman. But, he's interesting in his own right. Uh, we got Speedy, who, in this issue, is a burn victim. It's kind of, I guess it would be kind of a spoiler that he's burnt, except it's in the first page. I would say that's... It's speedy now. It's personal. It's speedy! Look at him! Look at what he's wearing! He's speedy! I can't argue with that. Stupid hat. Um, and then there's Starfire. Um, the writing in this one actually isn't terrible. However, uh, there's a motif in this one, as I was informed, that, uh, Arsenal, speedy, he, uh, is the only one on the team that does not, uh, like, use drugs anymore anymore there was the whole thing in like what was it green arrow and green lantern and they find out he was doing heroin which i don't know how that helps you as a superhero because if you know anything about heroin <laughs> um but there's like this scene when uh spoiler alert starfire is shooting up some performance enhancing drug and he's like no not you. And, yeah, I'm all like, really? Overall, this comic seems middle ground material. Like, people could meet in the middle, have very different ideas about the same thing, and it's just, eh, it's, it's mediocre. Uh, I give it a 6 out of 10, because I can see where there's some goodness in it, but overall it's just, eh. Mr. Hewitt has a new shtick this week, so I figure I'll have a new shtick as well. I'm going to review the issue I was disappointed by first, and then the issue that I absolutely loved last. Because everybody likes getting good things last, I think. So, the issue that I'm going to review first is... Axis, number two. New series, happening in Marvel, new, new event, big stuff. Red Skull has Xavier's brain... Grafted into his, so he's got super duper mutant abilities. And if you read the last issue, you know that he's been lurking in Tony's mind, making Tony do stuff. Tony Stark, you know who I'm talking about. And he created two super sentinels, specifically designed to counter uh, his superhero friends. Not a lot happens in this issue, really. We get a bunch of, like, Tony Stark feeling bad for himself. But kind of not feeling bad for himself, because he's like, this is who I am. I've always been competitive. Blah, 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 leg up. It kind of feels like the whole Batman Tower of Babel thing, only not as well done. I mean, again, the action is pretty good, watching the heroes fight, but, like, 
they get taken down so easily. Again, I know the point of these Sentinels is to defeat these heroes, but the combined might of Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange is defeated in all of, like, a page. There's a kind of surprise at the end, but if you been reading anything about the premise of the series, you know at some point the villains get involved, so at the end of this issue, the villains get involved, because uh, Tony reveals one of the weaknesses of the Sentinels, happens to be, if you are a villain, these Sentinels can do nothing to you, because apparently there's no overlap between villain and hero abilities, who knew? Can you look at his face? I want you to look at his face, and see why it is a silly, why it is a silly, silly concept. So, these Sentinels... I'm pointing to the comic. We're designed with the hero's powers in mind, not the villain's, which is why the Sentinels weren't immune to Magneto's magnetism. <sighs> like, they expect me to believe Tony Stark didn't think, well, giant metal robots, there is a chance someone might use some magnetic something or other with it. I just knew myself so disgusted that I can't finish this review. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> For my next comic, I decided to pick up The Logan Legacy. This is a uh, new series now that uh, Wolverine's dead, because it's his death of Wolverine. Um, I don't know how many issues it's going to be running. It looks like it's going to be about nine, I think? Because if you read this, just about every other page, there's a panel that says, uh, look for this in uh, Logan Legacy issue, insert future issue. So this is kind of a giant teaser trailer for the rest of it. However, as much as Guy hates Wolverine, I was never that upset with him. I mean, it may I will agree that he is in everything, and it was extremely irritating. However, as a short, angry person, I found him very relatable for me. Now that he's dead, I really don't care, because there's so many other characters that are more interesting, and... Every single character on the front of this is more interesting, including his clone Who and actually, his son. Huh? Who X-23? It was in a voluntary response. I love X-23. Yeah, that's because she's awesome. Uh, we got, was it, Deathstrike? Lady Deathstrike? Yeah. Yeah. I always want to call her Deathstroke. I'm like, no. That's someone else. Uh, Sabretooth, who I like because he's a very primal version of all of these characters. Like... I was very sad when they said they killed him off, and then I realized two minutes later, I'm like, oh, he's coming back. And then he came back, so here we are. Woo. And we have Mystique and Dakin. It's nice. Be fun. Pretty much, this is going to be dealing with uh, how they deal with Wolverine's death. If you kind of like these characters, you may want to like give it a look. I'm going to be picking up this entire series, and once we get to the last issue, I will talk about that talk about the series as a whole but for now I'm giving it, giving it a uh, 7 out of 10 just because it was a giant teaser trailer for the series it could have been more so I just spit on everything that's how angry I am but we're not talking about bad things anymore no no, no. this is a beautiful place this is a wonderful land where magical magical things happen Magical manga as things happen. You know, I'm talking about Edge of Spider Verse issue number five. Yep. Sp well, actually, no. Did you just say spider? Spider. Yeah. yeah that's what I imagine. Spider. spider. This beautiful, glorious just gift to comic kind was written by Gerard Way and illustrated by Jake Wyatt. It's my new favorite comic. It's. I loved Spider Gwen. I thought she was awesome. Edge of Spider-Verse 2, super cool. She got her own series, so a bunch of people agreed with me. She was a really awesome character, super fantastic. This is everything I've ever wanted from a comic. Just in general. Like, I won't even say a Spider-Man comic, because this person could have no ties to Spider-Man whatsoever and would still be amazing. Like, I'm just going to open up to a random page. This was a good page to open up to. Look at this. Look how gorgeous that is. Art is phenomenal, and Gerard Way, he just has such a way with writing comics. Like, his stuff is just so... It's, it flows so well. It has a very Evangelion, sort of, like, cerebral feel to it. And the creators, they were going for that. It's just, it's a lot of fun, and it's a really, really cool look into an alternate universe. To echo Mr. Hewitt's sentiments, where he was saying he wished that the Edge of uh, Spider-Verse would just keep going, that they would just keep showing us alternate looks into different Spider-Mans. 
I think it would be amazing because this one, with its manga influence and its giant robot influence and the really, really badass main character, it was like I walked with a spider. I read it and I wanted more. Like Spider One, I read it and I wanted more. I honestly wish that they would just make a new branch, like they have the Ultimate Universe. Just have the Edge of Spider-Verse universe, or the Spider-Verse. Just call the Spider-Verse, and just keep making stories like this. Let me see more of this girl's life. I hope she doesn't die in this upcoming uh, battle between the Spiders and Moreland. That's all I can say. It's literally, I don't want to give any more away because this was a fantastic story. You owe it to yourself to read it. If you like good things, you should read this comic. It was really amazing. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I mean, I'm sure there were things that were wrong with it. You know, pacing might not have been the best at certain points, but I think overall it was exactly what a comic should be. Here's Mr. Hewitt's thumb to give us the seal of approval on my 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I want you to write 10 out of 10, director, over and over again. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. We come back to our favorite new features and... It's 24. If you're looking for a definition of what this issue is, it's that sound. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Future's End. So in Future's End this week, they're losing me. Black Adam's in it. I hate to say it, but the longer this stuff, the longer it drags on. They fight. The more it loses me. And I... Explosion. I'm sad. And the flash is going. There are certain things that I'm about. Like these explosions he's showing you right now. They're talking about fighting. Like, I think Hawk Guy, Hawk Man, what is his name? Birdman! Uh, Angie and Birdman <laughs> and Frankenstein. And I always call them Frankenstizzle. And um, <laughs> Princess Amethyst. Like, their plot line is happening at a, a pretty good pace. And I feel like it, it's maybe, once again, just kind of spinning its wheels. But it is exciting to read. That is the weirdest part, because I used to hate that story arc. It was really irritating. Yeah. Now it's one of my favorites, and it sounds bad, but it became my favorite right at the moment when Black Adam and... Adam. Huh? Black Adam and Adam. Black Adam and yeah. the Black Adam. Black Adam and the Adam showed up. Um, there's a nice little dialogue between Barda and Miracle Man. Not Barda. Fury. Who cares? It did kind of come out of nowhere, but... I was happy for it, too, because uh, in Earth 2 and in um, World's End, they've been hinting at uh, Fury as a like progeny of Barda and um, Miracle. So it's nice to have a little family interaction. Yay! Then, show him, Shannon. Show him what's up. Then, then... Tell him what time it is, McCluskey. Then a lady and half a firestorm... Who were in the last issue are now talking in the Ronnie something? Sure. I hate him. <laughs> What's her name? Madison something? Sure. I hate her too. <laughs> okay, so I would be okay with them going over this arc and all that, except I don't know how much time has passed since the last issue, but they are very, very buddy buddy. They have. The last time they had an interaction before they were jogging that I know of was he pretty much just, like, groped her ass in a bar. And now he they're, was making, drunk. they're making pinky promises. Like, they're just like, Have a great day, pinky hug. I'm more interested in seeing how the hell these things are going to actually intertwine, intertwine with the plot. Ooh, I know. Funny story, true story. They won't. <laughs> and oh, then, uh... I'm obviously going to become a villain, Dr... Dr. Yeah, Transporter and uh, Donald Glover decide to uh, teleport things, and they uh, it works. And then when he's all like, he's like, we should totally teleport humans now. He's like, whoa, whoa, we got to baby step this one. Yeah, he's Kip like, like, you sound like you are against me. It's like, I'm sorry. He just made a logical statement. Like, this is their first successful test. The lab almost blew up, and they managed to teleport a mannequin. Those are not exceptional results. <laughs> yeah. I am not investing my faith in someone because they managed to almost destroy their lab. Teleporting a mannequin. Okay. Um, if you had to give this one a numerical score, what would you give it? Are we talking like is my family in danger? Sure. Do I have to give a numerical score? All right. Score? You're on a deadline. 
Uh, you get paid either way, but you have to have a score. What is it? Oh, I guess six. Really? I would have given it five. I was going to say five, but you like the Ronnie... I gave it seven. I gave it a five. <laughs> well, we'll say six. We'll say six. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes our episode. We hope you had a blast. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Let us know. Um, if, if you have any suggestions on what we should read. Well, as always, remember who you are, what you are. Don't go causing any trouble out there in that crazy world. And if you find yourself alone at night and just dreaming a beautiful dream, remember, I'm totally not watching. Totally not. I'm totally closing my eyes. I'm totally falling asleep. I'm, a little, I'm kind of watching you a little bit.